Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So I'm um, just going to jump straight into this video. So I released the uh, build update one for my cold ignite vortex um, or a cold igniter vortex <laughs> elementalist the other day. And we've since made some pretty big changes. We had an envy drop the other night because uh, obviously I'm using this to smash 400 depth crystal kings. Um, and yeah, so let's talk about the changes that we made in the build. And uh, yeah, so just without like going into too much detail straight up, uh, the POB, we have 559,000 effective hit pull, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's very tanky. And we get to like 1,728 regen. Uh, and then beyond that, we've got like, you know, combined DPS, uh, 6.5 million dot. And it can actually be higher than that too so the way that we would do that is we just literally change out the um the enfeeble for elemental weakness and then bam we go up by you know we go up to like 8 million total combined dps though we lose some effective hit pull we go down to 235 so yeah really up to you what you want to do with that like the yeah it's up to you so overall we're level 95 there's still definitely things to do so if i wanted to juice this up more i'd chuck another 200 there and get it to 97 so yeah uh pretty op so one other thing too like i'll probably do a, like a fully minimax guide on this but we don't have the correct cluster here so we've got to upgrade this cluster here um and you'll also see that i've uh included tattoos but we'll talk about that when we get to the tree so we'll just run through everything in the build and i'll just identify by exception what's changed and we'll talk about how i managed to juice my uh, defense up significantly by using tattoos which was a really good tip I think from I think curse or whatnot um, from discord and uh, yeah so thanks a lot for that tip it was freaking awesome um, but yeah anyway let's talk about that and let's talk about the build okay so as is my usual check configuration so uh, we, we have like one time spent station room when we boss fight like if we take that away the only effect of that is a little bit of ES regen uh, Solar Nara, Solar Tukahama, we have Energy Shield, we have Frenzy Charges, that comes from Cold Snap. Uh, we have Onslaught, actually we don't have Onslaught, we can get rid of that now. We're on Consecrated Ground because we're using Bottled Flight Faith. This was actually better than the Cinder Swallow, um, so I ended up switching to uh, Bottled Faith. Now, I should also add that when you're bossing, uh, you actually can run Taste of Hate, and we can sub that out for the Quicksilver Flask. So we actually have 1.4 million effective hit pull <laughs> it's so op <laughs> what the wtf like that's busted ass but anyway uh yeah so it's really strong um so yeah uh let's keep going so uh we have you crit recently yes or no like if i haven't it doesn't really matter too much it just procs the elemental overload which is over here um nearby enemies usually have like 10 oh crap it just goes up and that just synergizes with soul lunaris uh, crit recently, we got that off. Uh, enemies killed recently, like I have up to 10, but this doesn't really matter too much. It just adjusts the ES uh, regeneration rate based on the uh, the Vile Bastion, um, Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame. Uh, have you been hit rec recently? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Uh, do I have Convergence? Yes. Um, when you're hitting bosses, Convergence triggers, so you know, we just look at those bossing DPS. No other changes here. Uh, Guardical, gu Guardical, Guardian and Pinnacle damage, and Uber Boss, it actually gets still 258,000 effective hit pull. So, I was actually like borderline um, face tanking Uber Cyrus the other night with this one. So, it's getting quite powerful. There's burning damage on that too. Um, okay, and so we've got enemies are cursed, enemies are burning, enemies are ignited, enemies are shocked. shocked. So, this comes from Shaper of Flames, this comes from Shaper of Storms. Sapped ground is built into my boots. So that's here. I've got drop sapped ground while moving. So that's pretty powerful. Um, and then we have exposed to fire. We just do exposure all through the build and we also get it from the ascendancy. And actually we have more regen than that. I forgot about that. And it does way more damage because we've got bottled faith. Uh, enemies are covered in ash and that's coming from our infernal cry. And is the enemy on consecrated ground? Yes. And that is because we have bottled faith. So yeah, that's it for mechanics. There's no like weird or funky stuff here. And if you've seen it on stream, you can definitely attest to the fact that it is freaking tanky. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's talk about the build a little more. Oh, and by the way, we got up to 47,000 armor, which is really cool. So let's talk about the itemization and the changes that I made to this build over the last couple of days to make it so, so strong. 
Okay, so gearing wise, uh, nothing has changed in the helm, exactly the same as the last video, you're all G, nothing has changed on the scepter, you're all G there, nothing has changed on the shield, still standard Aegis Aurora, nothing has changed on the Dragon Fang's flight, uh, rings are still the same, the chest has changed. So if you have a look at the implicit, I managed to get a corrupted implicit on the chest for plus two socketed AoE gems, and if I could get duration or plus two gems, ideally, or like cold or whatever as another implicit, you could have plus four. But right now my vortex is level 30, which scales up the damage pretty significantly. So that's where a lot of DPS is coming off. And then that then converts using the pyre um, to fire damage, and then it just does a whole lot of damage. So yeah, that's where that's coming from. So that's pretty much the big change. That was like eight to 10 div, and I don't know what they are on the market right now if we try and search it uh oh, oh, oh. yeah they go up to like 14 to 18 div we're really look, talking like mid max sort of stuff like we have a big effective hit pull on this build so yeah that's how that works if you don't have it it'll drop your dps don't you know don't stress about that um best way to do it is like you could self six link it and then use a corrupting chain chamber which is a locus of corruption in the um in the uh at series temple um a bow temple and that costs like 110 chaos if you want to have a pun at that i did it once and i was like Ugh. uh it was just easier to farm crystal kings and just buy the chest piece outright but if you want to craft it that's how you do it uh so nothing has changed in the gloves the gloves could be better um but again nothing has changed the belt i did change so i did manage to get a really good belt that does regenerate 180 i managed to craft on 180 energy shield while there's a real unique, unique enemy so my defense goes way up in regeneration when I'm facing an enemy, which is really cool. Um, and then I've got resistances. I have 10% maximum energy shield, and this comes from the influence on the belt itself. And the way that you craft is just literally run fossil crafting. Like if you need a certain res, just hit that fossil in like a scorch fossil or a frigid fossil or a metallic fossil. You know, go figure, you know, fire, cold and, and, uh, and lightning. Um, and then you can run dense fossils onto it to try and get the percentage roll and more or less you'll be able to get that so this isn't like the best best belt but it's pretty good uh and boots haven't changed either now flasking i'm running a quartz flask granite flask bottled faith was better than cinder swallow so i switched to bottled faith uh basalt flask and i usually switch out my quicksilver flask for my taste of hate for when i'm fighting bosses like crystal king and stuff like that and this can take some pretty big hits from some pretty gnarly crystal kings if you guys have seen the stream i put down another crystal king last night that hit like a truck as well so that was a depth 400 so yeah that's it for the gearing all right so for skill gems uh the only changes that i made to skill gems is actually in the chest piece so i've got awakened swift affliction now i've got awakened deadly ailments uh cruelty support level 21 uh, level 21 Vortex, which was as it was last time. Uh, Empower level 4, which was an easy way to spend 5.5 div. And Awaken Unbound Ailments. And that's basically it for skill gem um, changes. Everything else is exactly the same. Alright, Atlas. So the Atlas for the most is exactly the same. I haven't really adjusted things. What I have actually done is enhanced the defense by tattoos. And this was recommended to me last night as a really cool tip and it is awesome so the tattoos in particular that i'm using are honored tattoo of the turtle and what this does is it gives you three percent increased global defense stat that includes armor and es both of them are global defenses which meant that because i don't need because i'm going to be stacking three percent global defense onto every one of my int nodes normally you would use the intelligent nodes to stack up we could actually do it there too um, to stack up more uh, ES right. Well, in this case, I've actually used it to stack up more, um, you know, ES and armor. So it's actually, it's like a double dip almost. It gives you both defensive stats that you require for this build to enhance Aegis Aurora the way that it needs to be to make it more powerful. So when you get hit and block, you get a lot more uh, percentage ES or percentage armor back because it gets the 47,000 armor, which is on the POB here. So we got a lot of armor. And so this was like an increase of like, I think 15,000 armor, something like that. It was material. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So I basically just did every single one of these in nodes, except for this one down here. If you're struggling, get attributes. You can go on a tattoo of the uh, Tuatara. 
and that'll give you attribute points and then that's how I cap my attribute points out so I can run everything without worrying about anything and the other advantage of having the Dragonflight's Fang is items and gems have 13% re re reduced attribute requirements which you can see I don't have enough strength to run this but I can run it thanks to this amulet so it's very very delicately balanced um so yeah uh, I pretty much have those, all those going through the entire build, which gives me 3% armor, 3% ES for every single one of these nodes moving forwards. Um, that follows the entire tree, which juices up my defense through the absolute roof. And I just thought, like, if we put one more point down in here, this would actually increase my... Holy Jesus Christ. Holy dooly. All right, well, that's a very big increase. So if you got to level 98, you could have nearly 3 million effective hit pool with that one node. That's just absolutely freaking insane. Um, okay, so yeah, that's really powerful. Uh, so that I'm going to upgrade that next. So yeah, when I level up again to level 96, when that eventually happens. Anyway, um, yeah, so yeah, that's really powerful. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it for the tree. Uh, now, I did change out one jewel in here, and I have a corrupted blood jewel in here now. So I'm corrupted blood immune as well, which was like one div to two div, I think. Um, but that's about it. Uh, I did change this cluster here, so this cluster is done. Uh, this is not the best cluster I could get for the medium, uh, but it was cheap, and I was like, yeah, whatever. And the other change I did make was in the Watcher's Eye. So the Watcher's Eye is now a uh, NG Shield Recovery Watcher's Eye when you have Discipline, which was better, and also a 20% damage over time multiplier while affected by Malevolence because that was just a better roll, gave me a lot more damage, and uh, and I had the currency to do it, so I did it. Um, yeah, so that's it for the tree. So I just wanted this to be a very quick by exceptions video instead of being a whole guide, like we've already done more or less the whole guide for this, but this is just like a continuation. And we're gonna release another video for this build, maybe. Um, this build's pretty much complete. Like I feel like this is pretty strong considering, yeah, it does pretty good damage um, and it is incredibly tanky. But uh, anyway, uh, that's basically it for the build. I'm trying to think of, is there anything else you need to know? I don't think there is at this stage. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, uh, until next time, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Uh, all the links will be in the description for the POBB and the um, POB itself. And I'll be working on a third build, which is going to be cast on Crit Fireball on the Chieftain. It's going to be uh, a CIES build again, because I just really like those types of builds. But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. But anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys later and uh, bye.